Hi class, this is Sir Alex Basco and welcome to our lesson in General Biology 2. Today we are going to discuss the Animal Nervous System Part 1. This is Lesson 11. Uh, previously we have discussed the Digestive System. We, all, we have also discussed the uh, pulmonary system or the respiratory system and the circulatory system now we're going to talk about the ba uh, basic stuff about the nervous system so let's begin well a little bit of overview the reason that we can actually see hear smell taste feel etc is because of our nervous system without the system we won't be able to taste our food we won't be able to smell food we won't be able to hear everybody we won't be able to watch our favorite shows that's why we owe a lot to our nervous system because this is the system that allows us to have what we call perception and perception is necessary for our survivability imagine if you can't see imagine if you can't hear imagine if you can taste or even sniff anything life would be much more difficult especially for us humans and all of this perce perception is actually dependent on very important two types of cells in our nervous system namely the nerve cells which uh, serves as the basic unit functioning in the nerve cells they are the one necessary in uh, transmitting signals and receiving signals into our brain and into the parts of our body and then we have the supporting cells, which are the glial cells, which nourishes, protects the nerve cells. And the nerve cells needs protection because, again, without these nerve cells, it will be very difficult for us to do and have this perception. And if there is some damage on our cells, we'll have a hard time uh, recuperating and we would have a hard time living in our world. And the signal that we actually use are basically electric signals that runs along the nerve cells and that is uh, done via what we call the action potential which is actually part two of our discussion but the chemical signals that the nerve cells release in order to signal to other cells and their targeted uh, areas is what we call a chemical signals or neurotransmitters we'll discuss just a little bit later but for now we're just going to keep it basic so let's understand a little bit more about our human nervous system. Our human nervous system is actually separated into two. We have the central nervous system, wherein it includes our brain and spinal cord. And all the information that is uh, necessary in order for us to understand and perceive the world is actually taking place in our brain and spinal cord. A lot of us may think that all the information is being processed in the brain, but actually a lot of our reflexes, for example, when you touch uh, very hot materials, uh, the nerves are actually created in such a way that these information does not need to go into the brain itself some of the information processing especially reflexes and very important matters that needs immediate reactions are just happening on the spinal cord so for example nakahawa kay na mainit na bagay you actually remove your hands without even thinking well that is because the signal for that hat material does not need to go to the brain anymore we have very important parts in our spinal cord that already understand what the signal is and then uh, fire back signals into our hands to remove it same thing when we pinch or nakaapak tayo halimbawa siguro ng bubog or uh, siguro habang nananahi kayo na pinch natusok nyo yung daliri nyo all of those are does not need any more brain um, information processing that's processing is just on the spinal cord so our body is actually created in such a way that is we can actually do this so just remember the central nervous system we have the brain and the spinal cord and outside the brain and the spinal cord or the central nervous system we have what we call the peripheral nervous system so it's basically the neurons found outside your brains and your nervous system and we have two different kinds of neurons we have the sensory neurons or which what we call the afferent neuron which starts with a these are the neurons that send signals from our body into our central nervous system so these are the system or the neurons that sends the information into our brain and our spinal cord and then we have what we call the motor neurons. Motor neurons is the one carrying the signal from the CNS into the parts of our body. 
So if we go back to the example, no napaso kayo, when you touch a very hot material, the sensory neurons will then receive the signal that, oh, this material is hot. And that signal will be brought into our brain and spinal cord, mostly in the spinal cord. And then the spinal cord will then send signal into our hand to remove our hand immediately. And they send that signal through the motor neurons. So I hope you can guys can see the distinction between the two. And this peripheral nervous system, the sensory and the motor neurons are found outside the CNS. But a lot of the motor neurons, uh, their there's cell body, just their cell body alone, the part of their neurons that is uh, where you will find the nucleus are actually found in the spinal cord. They're just extended all over our body. So as you can see those long axons, a lot of the motor neurons are actually very, very long, especially if you are a taller person. So for example, uh, yung mga basketballista like Hyo Ming, Kobe Bryant, they have longer neurons. So they're very, very diverse. But a lot of their uh, soma or a lot of their uh, cell body are found in the spinal cord with the axon extending all over our limbs, our feet, our body, our hands, fingers, etc. Another thing about peripheral nervous system is we actually have uh, the flight and fight response, uh, but we're not going to focus on that. We have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic part of the peripheral nervous system, but we're not going to focus on that part yet. Okay, but I hope you guys remember the difference between the two. Now let's talk about uh, the classes and the function of neurons. You have different types of neurons, we just discussed them. First, the sensory neurons. Again, sensory neurons are what we call the afferent. It starts with A. These are the inf uh, neurons that get information inside and outside the body that brings information to the CNS. Okay, and actually a lot of them uh, look like this. They are unipolar. This is what I call unipolar. We're not going to focus on the different uh, visual cues or anabang itura ng mga neurons. Uh, we're going to focus on very basic like I've mentioned. And then we have motor neurons which we have discussed just get information from other neurons to convey commands sa ating katawan, muscles, organs into our glands, etc. So sensory from the information papunta kay CNS and motor neurons CNS to the parts of our body. But there's also another type of uh, neurons which we call the interneurons. Interneurons are basically all found in the CNS. They are found in our brain and our uh, spinal cord. And their function is it connects one neuron to another. So it basically happens, for example, for sensory neurons as they send signals and they send signals into our let's say spinal cord along the spinal cord you may find the interneurons where in the signal from sensory neurons will be passed down to the interneurons and then the interneurons will send the signal into our cns or in our brain sometimes you can also even have a connection between the interneurons and the motor neurons where in the signal from the brain from the brain travels from the motor neuron from CNS to interneurons and then the motor neurons. So interneurons are basically just a connection between uh, all various neurons. They have different, uh, the basic function of neurons is basically one, to receive signals. Number two, integrate incoming signals. What I mean by this is a lot of the signals that we receive can be integrated into one big signals. And the reason that, for example, you feel one thing much uh, painful than the other is basically this integration. There's a combination of various neurons, an increase in the excitation, which results into a much more painful experience than the other. So there's an integration of those incoming signals, processing of those incoming signals, and after processing them, then we will have to communicate the signals to the target cell. So this is the basic functioning of neurons. So like I mentioned, there's actually various different uh, or various uh, look or visual cues or but we're gonna stick on the basic anatomy of neurons so it looks something like this although they have different shape uh, they have 
uh, most of them have a lot of these features that we are going to talk about today. Number one, we have the soma or the cell body of your neurons. Soma is where you will find the nucleus. This is where all the cellular respiration, or not cellular respiration, um, cellular duplication is happening, the DNA duplication, all the protein synthesis is happening in the nucleus, and the neurons actually use a lot of proteins so a lot of protein synthesis and protein transcription um, is happening uh, here the dogma I hope you guys remember how we create proteins and then we have what we call the dendrites the dendrites you usually find them on the cell body the function of a dendrite is to receive signals so usually I'm gonna tell it now the signal terminates at what we call the terminal button or the axon terminal and then from the terminal button there is a connection between one neuron from the another called the synapse or the synapse and the terminal button will release the neurotransmitter and the neurotransmitter can be received from the targeted cells or onto the dendrites so the neurotransmitter is released as for example there's another um, neurons here those neurotransmitter will be received by the dendrites and then the dendrites will then start another action potential in order to have the electric chemical the electric signal travel from the soma down in the terminal button again and when it uh, terminates at the terminal button that electric potential signal will then tell the axon terminal to release a new set of neurotransmitter and this signal can either actually be excitatory or inhibitory excitatory meaning when the dendrites receive the signal it will result in an action potential inhibitory meaning when the dendrites receive the signal from another terminal button here or terminal axon here it will not result in a uh, electric potential so there is no signal that will be released it will tell them to stop so those are the different types of signals that dendrites can actually receive or experience and then we have the axon this is the axon right here <clears throat> This is the portion of the cell nerves that carries the impulse, the electric impulse from the cell body into the axon terminal. There's a special part in the cell uh, near the cell body where in the action potential starts uh, to travel along the axon, which is what we call the axon hillock. Axon hillock is the start of axon and the axon terminal, terminal meaning the end, is the end of the axon. We can also call it the terminal uh, terminal button then we have what we call this this covering around your axon is what we call the myelin sheet myelin sheet is basically a fatty substance that surrounds your axon and the important part about the myelin sheet is an insulating layer and what it does is it actually increases um, it actually increases the travel or the speed and the efficiency of the electric impulse traveling the axon, uh, traveling along the axon. And there's actually a disease, a uh, very popular disease, and the problem is I forgot the name of the disease, which is the result of the the not production of the myelin sheet so when this person does not properly produce the myelin sheet they usually have issues in the nervous system no and a lot of people actually has this type of disease so myelin sheet is very important because without this it will take a longer time for the electric impulse to travel and we're going to discuss this process when we talk about action potential next we have the accent terminal accent terminal is just the ending of your accent wherein the neurotransmitter is released this is where you will find a lot of neurotransmitters such as your mm, there's some examples of uh, neurotransmitters I can't think of one for now but a lot of the uh what do you call this antidepressants are a type of neurotransmitters but yeah so these are just neuro uh chemical signals so hindi lang siya electric signals but uh when it when the electric signals reaches the accent terminal 
it's actually chemicals that will release and that chemicals will be received by the dendrites or those chemicals will actually be attached into the receptor of your targeted cells. And then we have the synapse is basically the connection between neuron to neuron. So if you have another neuron here, the small space between the axon terminal or the terminal button and the dendrites is what we call the synapse where in the neurotransmitter actually travels to go from one neuron to another neuron. Next, we're going to go immediately into the types of glial cells. If you notice in your module, there's a little bit of this discussion about knee jerk motion and uh, other things we're not going to discuss that deeply because we're just going to focus on the basic of um, uh, neuron or the nervous system so we're going to talk about the glial cells glial cells like i mentioned earlier are the supporting cells they are the one necessary to support uh, our nerve cells which is the basic functioning cells in our nervous system without these glial cells our nervous system would have a hard time doing their job so although they are not very popular compared to the nervous system they function they do a lot of function one of which is what we call the astrocytes we have four main types beginning with astrocytes astrocytes are the most numerous types they regulate the blood flow maintain the composition of fluid around the neurons and regulate communication at the synapse but one of the things that they do is during the development stage of humans they are actually helping neurons find their destination as we develop next we have the microglia or in the job of the microglial cells similar with macrophages they are for the immune system they are the one necessary to remove dead cells and other debris in our nervous system in order to protect and to clean up our nervous system and then we have the oligodendrocytes and the Schwann cells. Oligodendrocytes and the Schwann cells are basically the one producing the myelin sheet. Oligodendrocytes produce the myelin sheet for the CNS and Schwann cells pr uh, produce the myelin sheet for the uh, PNS, so for the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And then we have what we call the satellite glial cells. Uh, we do not actually know yet the specific function of the satellite glial cells but it's tough to act as a barrier around the pns ganglia ganglia is basically a bunch of nerves a combination of various nerves and the satellite glial cells actually acts to cover this ganglia because it's actually very important sometimes it ganglia a lot of the signals like i've mentioned it does not directly go to the brain anymore some of them are on the um some of them are on the spinal cord uh some of those function is also from uh along the ganglia so it's a bunch of connection of neuron or uh, neurons and then we have the last called the epidermal cells epidermal cells is the basically uh stimulating the cerebral fluid the cerebral spinal fluid found in our brain and the canal of our spinal cord it has hair like structure that brushes or stroke on the cerebral spinal fluid so the four main types of glial cells that we're going to focus are basically the astrocytes microglia the oligodendrocytes and the schwann cells these are the most uh, much more important glial cells that we are going to discuss so again we're going to keep this simple we're going to discuss the next part is the action potential uh, which is how signals or the electric signals start um, on the dendrite and it pass and go on to the axon and how it influences the release of neurotransmitters so we're gonna keep we're gonna finish our discussion on neurons here thank you so much guys if you guys have any questions about our discussion today do not hesitate to message and have a great day